by transcription. Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Bill Harris Alice Fay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. This is your Rexall family druggist here to say hello and welcome for the 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You know us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows, but our best identification is that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Household words like Rexall aspirin, for instance, the fastest acting aspirin you can buy. Yes, by laboratory test, Rexall aspirin disintegrates faster than any other leading brand tested. And it's quality like that we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Your Rexall Family Druggist brings you the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Phil and Frankie have just come from a meeting with Jack Benny. It seems Jack is taking his show to New York for a couple of weeks, and he's informed Phil that he is going with him. Phil and Frankie are talking it over as they walk down the street. How do you like that cheapskate, Benny? (laughs) Taking you to New York, but not me. I play in the band, you'd think he'd... Frankie, he's just taking the cast. Nobody's even allowed to bring his wife. I'm going to have to be in New York for two whole weeks without Alice. (laughs) (laughs) Just take Harris on the loose in little old New York. (laughs) Oh, what a beautiful evening. Oh, what a beautiful day. Why do you have to go? Well, why do I have to go? Because they're clamoring to see me back east. That's why. Well, I'll be the best thing that's happened to Manhattan since the Pilgrims landed on White Rock. <laughs> oh, gee, Curly, I'm disappointed about not going on this so trip. So was Alice. I called her and told her as soon as I found out. Frankie, I'd pay your fare, but it'll cost me about $150 to take you on this trip, and I can't spare the money. Yeah, if I could only raise the dough myself, I... Frankie, why are we stopping in front of this pawn shop? (laughs) Curly, I got the solution. I'm going to hock something to get the money from my fare. Come on. Oh, will you, Frankie? Gee, it'll be swell having you with me. Ah, It's a nice little store. Hmm? Where do you go to get the money? Right over to that cage marked Remley. (laughs) (laughs) They got a special department for you? Well, I've hocked a few things here. (laughs) Yeah, come on. Here's my special rack. That's my overcoat. That's my suit. Hmm, new (laughs) mothballs. There's my guitar. Hello, son. Hi. Frankie, you put your mother in hock? <laughs> of course not. This is the wife of the guy who owns the place. I oh. just call her mom. Oh. <laughs> Say, Mom, I'd like to get a little money on something. I'm sorry, son, but you know we don't handle stolen goods. <laughs> what do you mean, stolen goods? Well, I know you don't have anything left of your own to hock. <laughs> Mom, don't be a comedian. I can't stand funny old ladies. I got something to hock. I don't want to because it's a Christmas gift and it has sentimental value, but I got to do it. How much can you let me have on a solid gold timepiece? I'll have to see it first. Okay. Curly, take off your wristwatch and show it to the lady. You 
want me to hock the wristwatch that Alice gave me for Christmas? Why, well, I'd rather give you the gold out of my teeth and let me get your hand out of my mouth. <laughs> Now, Curly, if you're my pal, you'll let me hock your watch. Won't do you any good in New York, anyway. What do you mean? There's a three-hour difference in time. <laughs> what good is a California watch going to do you in New York? True. <laughs> Alice gave me the watch, and I don't want to... Alice won't even know it's gone. As soon as we get back from New York, we'll redeem it. Well, okay. Thanks, pal. I want you to know I'll never forget this. Someday when you're broke and down and out, <laughs> lying in the gutter, you just call on me. Why call? I'll just nudge you. <laughs> I'll get the 150 from Mom, and I'll go down and see Bill Riggs at the Santa Fe and buy another ticket for the Chief, then I'll go home and break the news to Alice. Now, meet me at the house later. Right. Huh? Alice, do you mean to tell me you're allowing Philip to go to New York all alone without you? Well, why not? When he called, he said he was going on business. Business my elbow. <laughs> Far be it for me to start any trouble. But I know when Philip gets to New York, he'll spend all his time in nightclubs where I can just see him sitting in the Copacabana now. What's wrong with that? He's not alone. <laughs> He's not? Who's with him? A chorus girl. What are they doing, Willie? She's sitting on his lap. She is, huh? Hey, Alice, I'm home. How are you, honey? Get that woman off your lap! <laughs> Woman, what laugh? Now don't try to squirm out of it. Willie saw you sitting at the Copacabana. And with a redhead on your lap. Oh, Phil, how could you? <laughs> oh, I gotta lock the liquor cabinet. <laughs> These two have been sniffed in my brandy. <laughs> Alice, what's going on here? I'm just teasing you, Phil. Willie has an overactive imagination. He thinks you're anxious to go to New York without me. You're not. Are you, Phil? Oh, honey, how could you even ask me that? Why, going to New York without you is like... like going to Chicago without you. <laughs> well, at least I got an answer. It doesn't make any sense, but it's an answer. <laughs> Phil, you're sure you're going to New York, aren't you? Of course I'm going to New York, and I can prove it. Here's the envelope with my ticket. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Yes, it's a ticket to New York, and... Why, Phil, there are two tickets in here. Oh, yeah, that other ticket. That's for... Oh, got... you darling, you bought it from me. What a wonderful surprise. But, Alice, well, that ticket... if you're leaving in the morning, I'd better start packing. No. You're a wonderful husband, and I love you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Remley's gonna hate me, hate me, hate me. <laughs> That's his ticket. There it goes. Well, if I can't take Frankie to New York, I can't take him. I really should take Alice anyway. After all, she's my wife. <laughs> and it'll be kind of nice having a little woman by my side. <laughs> and besides, I can't get out of it now. Remley will understand. Well, he Curly, here I am. I'm all packed and ready to leave. You going someplace? <laughs> of course I'm going. You got my ticket, didn't you? Yep. You told Alice about the ticket, didn't you? Yep. And I'm all set to go, ain't I? Nope. <laughs> Never mind the Gary Cooper dialogue. <laughs> What happened to my ticket? Alice found it. She thought it was for her. She's going. Alice? Curly, something's got to be done about that woman. <laughs> I can take just so much. Why didn't you talk her out of it? I couldn't. Well, I I'll tried talk to... her out of it. I'll speak Before to her. Before I forget, her. Phil, Mr. Scott called and he wants you to call him at Rexall. Oh, hello, Frankie. Hello. <laughs> Did you hear the good news? I'm going to New York. 
You're going to New York? Mm -hmm. During the blight? (laughs) What blight? The locust blight. Those little rascals have engulfed Manhattan. They've eaten 12 floors of the Empire State Building and the Hoboken Ferry Boat. (laughs) Frankie, stop with your wild stories. I'm going to New York and you can't talk me out of it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go upstairs and finish packing. And honey, don't forget to call Mr. Scott. I'll call him later. Well, Frankie, I guess you don't go to NY. That's what you think. I'll just have to hock something else. Wait a minute. (laughs) I got nothing left for you to hock. Curly, I don't expect to hock anything else of yours. That's better. I'm not a heel. This is Alice's fault. I'll hock something of (laughs) hers. How about that silver tea set? No, 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 not that. Why not? Alice will never miss the tea set. Well, I promised to take you. I know I promised to take you, but... All right. But you've got to redeem it the day we get back from New York. Okay. I'll get the money and buy the ticket. I'll see you later, Curly. <laughs> Curly, I did fine. I got my ticket to New York right here in my pocket. Good old mom. She gave you 150 on the silver set, huh? Well, not quite. I had to throw in a little something extra. Gee whiz, Remley, I hope Alice don't notice that that tea set and my watch are missing because she'll suspect that we're up to... Well, Phil, I'm all finished packing. Gosh, it's tiring. Well, it must be, honey. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes. Look at your watch and see if it's time for tea. Tea! Remley, hmm? Pico wants tea. <laughs> she wants to know what time it is, too. What's the matter with you, too? Oh, honey, we don't feel like tea. How about a nice cup of piping hot coffee? We got that nice new automatic coffee master. Nope. <laughs> you mean nope, Gary? When I hocked the tea set, that was a little something extra I had to throw in. What are you two mumbling about? Make up your minds what you want to do. Oh, yes, I almost forgot it. How about a round of piping cold water? (laughs) Remley, we still got the sink, haven't we? Oh, never mind. I'll go in and make some hot chocolate. Okay, honey, that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. There's an arrow in, huh? (laughs) Yeah. Well, we better be careful. Look, before you get in any more trouble, why don't you go home and I'll meet you at the train tomorrow? Now, don't lose the ticket. Don't worry. I got it right here in my pocket, and I won't. <laughs> Woo. Early, it's gone. I got a hole in my pocket. It must have dropped out. Oh, no. You pawn my watch, Alice's tea set, and the coffee master to buy your ticket, and then you lose it. Now, what are we going to do? I wonder how much I can get on that portrait. Don't touch that! <laughs> That's an oil painting of Petrillo, you fool. <laughs> Get on out there and start looking for that ticket. You must have dropped it outside All right, okay. well, Hurry up. Right. Oh, that Remley. How can a guy be so careless? He'd lose his head if I didn't tighten the screws for him every day. <laughs> he whiz, I'm you not... You fellas lost something deep. What happened to Frankie? Oh, honey, he had to go downtown. He... You know, honey, it's going to be nice in New York. Just the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to take the children, but their grandma will take good care of them. Hey, Alice, you know, uh, we may not be in New York alone. You see, uh... Mommy, I... look what we found in the hall. It's a ticket to New York. Oh, thank goodness. That's the ticket I... Oh, Phil, you darling, you bought another ticket so we could take the children with us. <laughs> But, Alice, it's only one ticket. All they need is one ticket. They go for half fare. Come along, children. If you're going to New York, I have to pack your things. But, Alice, there's something i got to tell you, honey. <laughs> oh, how am I going to face Remley? Hey, Curly, I looked around outside, but I can't find the ticket. I don't know where it could be. Stop looking. It's been found. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I thought I'd never get on that chief. You still ain't getting on that chief. <laughs> Why? The 
squaw is taking her papooses. <laughs> Might as well tell you, the kids found the ticket in the hall. Alice thought it was for them, and now they're going now. I gotta destroy this family. <laughs> Curly, you can't do this to me. You promised to take me to New York, and you've got to go through it. I know I promised it. Oh, all right. Look, $150 for living expenses in New York, and I'll buy you a ticket with that. Oh, Curly, look. If I take your expense money, how would you live in New York? I just won't be able to eat. <laughs> well, as long as you got it figured out, I'll take the money. <laughs> Wait till I count it out. There's 20, 40, 60. Bill, do you want to take this suit? What suit? Oh, I'll be with you in a minute, honey. 80, 100. Come on, hurry up, will All you? All right, there. And this take... time, I'm not coming back here with the ticket. If Alice sees it, she'll probably think it's for Willie. Oh, sure. That's all I got to do. Lay out $150 for a ticket to take Willie to New York. Oh, Phil, you're taking Willie, too. Willie! <laughs> Blonde bandit! <laughs> Don't be silly. Why should Phil buy a ticket for you? His brother in law is much closer to him. This is just a family affair. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll call Willie and tell him. Alice, I warn you, if you people don't take me to New York, I'll. I'll shoot myself! Don't do it in here. I just had the rug cleaned. <laughs> Frankie, I'm sorry. I despise you. <laughs> I still want you to go, but I haven't got any more dough. We can only borrow it from somebody. But who? Alice is the only one that's got any money, and she won't lend it to me. All right, just a minute now. Just a minute. What? She might. We softened her up a little. We played on her sympathy. There's... Hey, I got it. She heard me threaten to shoot myself. Suppose I pretend I do it. Yeah. Sure. She'd think it was her fault, and then she'd come through, huh? Come on, let's get in the kitchen. Now, look. Hmm? We'll smear some ketchup on you. Fire a gun, and then I'll tell Alice you shot yourself. Yeah, this'll do it. Hey, where's the ketchup? We haven't got any ketchup, but here's some chili sauce. <laughs> now, just lie down there, and I'll smear a little on your chest. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. How do I look? Like a side order of French fries. <laughs> nah, it ain't gonna work, Remley. It's too lumpy. Won't work. What we need is real blood. Stop staring at me. I'm not in a bleeding mood. But I tell you, if we're going to fool Alice, we got to get some real blood. Hiya, fellas. I brought my groceries. Well, if it ain't the plasma kid. <laughs> the walking blood bank is with us. Let's step up to his paying vein and make a withdrawal. <laughs> Oh, say, Julius. Hey, kid, uh, we want you to do us a little favor. We'd like to borrow some of your blood. <laughs> Why do I keep coming to this house? <laughs> you guys going into the vampire business now? <laughs> Look, Julius, all we need is a quart. You'll never miss it. No. All I use it for is to keep me alive. <laughs> At the risk of appearing inquisitive, what do you want my blood for? So Mr. Remley can go to New York. Oh. Why not take two quarts so he can make a round trip? <laughs> Listen to me a minute. Mrs. Harris and me are going to New York, and this is just a little scheme we cooked up to get her to pay Frankie's fare. Yeah, the only way we can get the money is to play on her sympathy, so I'm going to pretend that I shoot myself. 
That's a very smart scheme. But I know a way you can improve on it. How? Don't pretend. <laughs> hey, Ramblin. Hmm? The kid's right. <laughs> if you used a real bullet, it'd fool Alice completely. <laughs> I'll just spread this chili sauce out a little thinner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks perfect. You can't tell that from real blood. But I have a feeling Mrs. Harris will know it's chili sauce. How will she know? I'm going to tell her. <laughs> you better keep your mouth shut, Julius, or I'll take you apart. I'll keep it shut for a proper consideration. Like, say, a trip to New York with you. <laughs> He's got us, Curly. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All right, Julius, I'll try to get enough money from Alice for both of you. Now, look, Julius, here's how you can help. I'll go inside and talk to Alice. And when you hear me say, Frankie is brokenhearted, you yell, stop, don't do it. Frankie, you fire the gun, and I'll tell Alice you shot yourself. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, don't forget, the cue is, Frankie is broken-hearted. Right. I hope this works. That Alice ain't so easy to fool you. Oh, there you are, Phil. Have you called Mr. Scott oh, yet? Oh, honey, I haven't got time for that now. I'm worried about Frankie. He's awfully upset about not going to New York, and there's no telling... There's no telling what he might do, because Frankie is broken-hearted! <laughs> Oh, no! Frankie killed himself! <laughs> well, Julia said, Stop, don't do it! I said, Frankie's killed himself, and then there was a gunshot. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Well, well, I just had a feeling he was going to do it. Come on, honey, let's go in and see. Oh, don't be silly. He wouldn't kill himself. I tell you, he would, because Frankie is brokenhearted. Stop! Don't do it! <laughs> you see, honey, he did it again. That kitchen. Oh, this is all your fault, Alice, because you wouldn't loan him the money to go to New York. Yes, yes, poor Frankie. We better get to him fast. <laughs> look at him, Alice. Just look at him. Look at him lying there in that pool of chili blood. I'm afraid he's going fast. Oh, Franklin, speak to me. Say something. I, I. I... Do you have any last requests, pal? Yes. Alice, take me to New York and bury me there so my father can visit my grave. Your father lives in North Dakota. <laughs> Let him commute. <laughs> oh, look, everybody, that bullet made a great big hole in his shoulder. We better put something in there to stop the blood. I'll get a cork. That won't do it. <laughs> Court. Get a towel. No, no, don't bother with a towel, Alice. Just stuff it with a ticket to New York. <laughs> it's a pretty big hole. You better stuff it with two tickets. <laughs> Bill, if Frankie's dying, the least we can do is make his last moments comfortable. Yes, honey. I'll prop up his head and you scrape off the blood and put it back in the chili bottle. <laughs> You mean you knew all the time? Of course I knew. I've never seen such bad acting. You should act so good when you die. <laughs> what is this all about? Well, I promised to take Frankie and Julius to New York, and we were trying to get the money from you. Well, why didn't you say so, Phil? I'll be glad to buy them each a ticket. Gee, thanks, honey. 
And you can pay me when we get back. Pay hey, you? <laughs> but, Alice, I can't afford it. Hey, Mr. Harris, I better go home and start packing. Wait a minute. I'll see you at the train. Wait a minute. And I'd better finish packing the children. Wait a minute, everybody. <laughs> oh, no. I have to pay for five tickets to New York at $150 a piece. Five times 150 is... is... At least. <laughs> well, where is everybody? Oh, hello, Mr. Scott. I was supposed to call you, but I got... Yes, yes. I, I wanted to talk to you about going to New York. Go buy your own ticket! <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, I just laid out five times 150 to take everybody to New York. Alice, Willie, the kids, Julius and Frankie, and I... Well, gonna... what a happy coincidence. I came over on behalf of Rexall to ask you to make appearances in New York to further the March of Dimes campaign. Oh, well, I'll be glad to do that. Yes, yes, we want you to take your entire cast, and we were going to pay all expenses. You are? We were. <laughs> now that you bought the tickets for everybody, we won't have to. Oh! Well, it's very generous of you, Harris, and we have... We... No, uh, oh, he passed out. <laughs> well, I'll just tippy toe out of here and let him sleep this one off. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. Everybody's been talking about the cold weather lately, and that always reminds me of one big reason for the uniform quality of MI-31, Rexall's famous mouthwash. Why? What's cold weather got to do with MI-31? Well, ma'am, uh, well, first I should explain that the antiseptics used in MI-31 include highly efficient yet mild oils. And Rexall's men of science had to find a way to keep them in solution at their most effective strength. After long and careful experiment... What do you think they discovered? I don't know, but I'll bet it has something to do with cold weather. And you're right. After the MI-31 solution is carefully mixed, it's subjected to a rapid drop in temperature in specially designed cooling units. This makes it possible to filter off the excess oils, and those remaining are kept in solution at their most effective strength. And, uh... How strong is that? Well, ma'am, full-strength MI-31 kills contacted germs almost instantly. It's quality like that we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Folks, seriously, our entire cast is leaving for New York tomorrow to do our radio programs on the 5th and 12th of February to help further the March of Dimes campaign. And if you'd like to see one dollar do the work of two, give to the March of Dimes. It will gladden your heart. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This program was produced and transcribed by Paul Phillips. If vitamin deficiency is making it hard for you to take this winter weather, try Plenamins, Rexall's popular multivitamin capsules. Just two plenamin capsules a day give you more than the daily minimum requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established, plus valuable liver concentrate and iron. The daily dosage is sealed in airtight metal foil. Just break it off, and the remaining capsules stay completely protected. Ask for plenamins wherever you see the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name... Rexall. Stay tuned for Sam Spade, then Theater Guild on the Air on NBC.